When you heard not guilty at the trial, what was that moment like? Speechless. Wow, stunning. Sickening for him to just walk and not be able to say what really happened. Tell us what was just devastating. Absolutely devastating. The reason it was reopened is that we received information that led us to believe there could possibly be some fresh and compelling evidence, and we followed up that line of inquiry throughout uh, 2014. Unfortunately, it led to, uh, led to nowhere. During that line of inquiry, during that time, was Michael Atkins always your main suspect? We look at all possibilities, but uh, all the evidence led back to one person being involved in the disappearance and uh, having knowledge of the matter, and that was Michael Atkins. When a person is giving evidence at a coronial inquest, they have the right to silence on the basis that they may be incriminated by the evidence that they provide. There is also uh, provision for a Section 61 certificate to be granted. What that means is that the person can give evidence without fear of prosecution. So in effect, someone can get in the witness box with a Section 61 certificate, make full and frank admissions, and that evidence can't be used against them. I think it's important to understand this in the, the complexity of the, the decision-making process was that it was my view and that of the other investigators on the uh, strike force, the likelihood of us gathering any fresh or compelling evidence against uh, Michael Atkins was uh, very unlikely. It could be said that it was a risk. We're putting someone in the witness box that potentially could make admissions in relation to a murder and that we couldn't use that, uh, use that information against them. But I think it's important to understand the, the pain and suffering that Mark and Faye have gone through for the, the 10 years or so since Matt's disappearance. They were put in a very difficult position of deciding whether they should agree on the basis that this person might get in the witness box, say what's happened to Matt, and we wouldn't be able to prosecute him. So it was a difficult decision for them. If he didn't do this, we'd end up with little more than we already had. Uh, it was a gamble. It was a big gamble. And Faye often says it, it's a deal with the devil. He contradicted himself and uh, he potentially perjured himself in the evidence that he provided. And at that particular point in time, that gave us a bargaining tool uh, to uh, have a discussion uh, with, uh, uh, with his legal representatives. So what was the bargain? Basically to give Michael Atkins indemnity from prosecution for the perjury. In return for what? In, in return for him telling us exactly what's happened. But when you reflect on your priority, and that was to bring Maddie home, mm. did that overshadow everything else? Yes, it it did. that was our goal, was to bring him home, and we said bring him home and lay under rest like every person deserves. To me, it was a win-lose, and the big win was we got our son back. The loss, well, I don't care what happens to him. The indemnity was on the basis that we recovered the body. If we didn't recover the body, it was our intent, as per the agreement, we were going to um, pursue uh, prosecution for perjury. He then provided um, us an account of uh, what took place that day. He went to a Bunnings hardware store and purchased a matic and duct tape with the express purpose of uh, using that equipment to uh, dispose of uh, Matt's body. It took us 20 days to find the body. He provided us a, uh, a drawing, a mud map for want of a better word, as to the location of where Matt's body was. And it was just like a finality. It was like, I can't describe it, it was bittersweet. I was happy that we kept our promise to him. We were on the same token. It was real. It was very, very real. <laughs>